you for joining me. In this video, we will be demonstrating the Dinerware POS system as it relates to a full-service, fine dining establishment. Dinerware software is the easy-to-use POS system that offers the flexibility to manage your business your way. The Dinerware software was designed with three main principles in mind. In the left-hand corner of the screen, we have listed these principles. They are ease of use plus high reliability equals a low cost of ownership. We continuously hear from restaurant owners, managers, as well as staff that our point of sale software is the most user-friendly system they have ever experienced. The basic premise of Dinaware is that restaurant owners should be able to manage the system themselves and not require a lot of technical help. That's a little background on the Dinaware point of sale system. Now let's get started with a demo. The most important feature on the front page of the software is the 10 key pin pad. Each employee will have a unique four digit pin or we can use magnetic swipe cards. They will use these to log into their account. This will also function as their time clock so you can very easily pull a payroll report with the employees hours worked as well as how much they are owed. So to clock in we'll enter our four digit pin then select the job that we are performing for that shift. If you have multiple employees that perform different jobs for different shifts, you can assign those jobs and adjust the pay rates for each to ensure your payroll report is accurate. I'll select manager for this shift. Once we are logged in, we will see our order entry screen. Down the middle of our screen, we have all of our different menu categories, and within each of those categories, we have each individual menu item. This menu screen can be completely customized to each individual restaurant's menu and can be changed as frequently as needed in just a couple of minutes. You can see here under appetizers I have all my appetizers, under sandwiches I have all my sandwiches, and so on. You can also have as many of these categories as you'd like. Once we select a menu item, we can associate a list of modifiers to that item. For example, with my wings here, I do have a choice set or a modifier, which is wing sauce. And this is actually required, which is indicated by this little red question mark here. I can't even send this order to the kitchen until I make that selection. I also have an optional choice set here, which is a dip. So that's how the menu is structured. Now let's run through a few common transaction scenarios. One feature of having and operating on a POS system is that it makes it very easy to open and manage bar tabs. Rather than hanging on to the customer's card all night, we can actually swipe it right there on the side of the terminal. You can see I have my system set to pre-authorize for $25. We can adjust this amount or we can turn this function off. However, this function ensures that the card is at least good for this amount and you can see it also opens the tab up with the person's name on it. You do not have to worry about coming to the end of the night and have the card decline. We know it's good and we know exactly who it belongs to. Now let's cover FastPay. The FastPay feature allows few touches on the screen so your servers can help guests more quickly. If a customer walks up to the bar and orders a drink, we'll simply tap that menu item, which is one touch, for example, Bud Light. With that one touch, the system opens a ticket for that item and down at the bottom of the screen, our FastPay keys populate and those totals adjust depending on the total amount of the ticket. So if they hand us a $5 bill, we'll simply tap the 5, and then our change will pop up in big bold letters and the cash drawer would open at that point. I'll go ahead and demo that again. Coors Light, one touch, $10 bill, and we've helped the customer. So you can really see how that would speed up a busy bar line. Now let's go over a full service sit down ticket. We'll come to the bottom of our screen and tap new ticket, which will prompt us for our table selection. You can have as many different sections as you'd like and you can move these tables around, change their shape and size to make it reflect your restaurant. So first I'll choose the table. How about bar table number one? Then I'll choose the number of guests sitting at the table. How about two? Here I do have the option to put in a custom name if I'd like, maybe a last name or a shirt color. I'll go ahead and hit OK. 
And here's my ticket for bar table number one with two guests. So we'll go ahead and give these guests some drinks and some food. Let's do some glasses of wine. And then how about some appetizers? We'll choose the wings with the buffalo sauce and blue cheese. Then how about the house nachos? We'll select OK. The food will print out in the kitchen, the drinks will print out in the bar, and that ticket's just going to hang out right here. If I want to edit that at all, add any new items, I'll just tap it back open. If a new person joins the party, I'll go ahead and select new person down at the bottom, and that adds another person onto the table. So we'll go ahead and give them some food and some drinks as well. Let's go ahead and give them the dinerware burger. Again, here are some of those modifiers or choice sets. So for example, I have to choose the temperature for my meat first. We'll choose medium rare. And then here is a side. Again, this is required. I can't send this to the kitchen until I make this required choice set. And when I choose side salad here, it's actually going to prompt me for a sub choice, which is the dressing. We'll go ahead and choose ranch. We also have upcharging with this feature. So if they want to add bacon to their burger, you can see the system will upcharge accordingly. So you really can account for any modification within the software. If the first two guests would like another round, I'll simply highlight those items and press the repeat button, and that'll tack on another round. When I hit OK, all of those new items will print out at their printers, and if the guests are ready to pay, Again, I'll simply tap it back open. If they would all like separate checks, the system makes it very easy to split tickets. I simply come down here to the split ticket button, and this is going to give me every single way I can split the ticket. First, I can select certain people from the party and place them onto one ticket. I can also select certain people from the party and place them each onto their own ticket, or I can split everyone off onto their own check in the party. I'll go ahead and choose that and hit split. And now you can see for bar table one, there are three separate checks. To pay this ticket out, I'll simply open the check up and come into my pay screen. Here's my pay screen, and we do have a lot of different options within this pay screen. I do have some fast pay keys on the side. I can enter a specific amount in the middle here, and these fraction keys are used in the case where they give us multiple credit cards and they want it split evenly amongst those cards. So if they do give us three credit cards, we'll hit the one third button. The system will do the math for us and we can run each card for that amount. We can also pay with multiple tender types. So if they give us five dollars in cash, we'll simply tell the system five cash. The system will let us know there's still 1015 due on the check. We can make another payment here swipe the card on the side of the terminal for the rest of the amount, confirm our sale, and you can see this check has been paid out in full, but we still have the opportunity to add a credit card tip. If I'm not adding my credit card tips on until the end of my shift, I can simply come down here to the hide authorize button. That'll hide all of my tickets that are closed out but waiting for a credit card tip, so I can focus on my open tables. And then when I'm ready to add those tips on at the end of my shift, I'll simply unhide authorize. And at that time, I can go back into the ticket and enter in my tip. So we'll do $2, enter tip, finalize. And that'll close the checkout. If I come down here to list view, I do have another way of looking at my tickets. In list view, I do have a couple more options. So I can highlight certain tickets and combine those tickets by pressing combine. I can also transfer tickets to other employees. So if my shift is ending, but I still have a table that's not ready to leave yet, I can go ahead and highlight that table, and then I can transfer that to a different server. How about Sally? She can go ahead and take care of the rest of that table, and I can go ahead and clock out. I do that by coming up to my personal page here. Here I do have a detailed shift report available. I can print this out right on the side of the terminal, and then I can clock out.
going to ask me for my adjusted tips, which are cash tips. Known tips are my credit card tips, so I'll go ahead and enter those, and then I can clock out. And this brings me back to the front page where the next employee can clock in or log in as needed. So that covers our full service ordering scenarios. Now we'll go over some of the management functionality. To enter into the manager screen, I will tap on the manager button at the top of the screen. Here's our back office screen where we can update or add menu items, edit or add employees and jobs, set up any discounts we might have, and also run all of our reports. Back here, you can see we use complete sentences for each description, which makes it very simple to decipher where you need to go to accomplish each task within the software. First, let's go into the menu editing screen and see how simple it is to add or change a menu item. Here's where we can add or edit screen categories, menu items, as well as choice sets or choices, and create any taxes. If I'd like to edit a menu item, I would simply highlight that item and come down here to the edit button. But for now, let's add a new menu item. First, we enter the menu item name. Let's go ahead and make the dinerware special. So we've entered our menu item name. Here we do have the option of putting in an alternate kitchen print name. This is any alternate lingo the cooks might use, maybe an abbreviation or a number. You do have the option to put that here and that will print out on the kitchen ticket. Next, we choose the revenue class. The revenue class is the higher level item that that item is. We can also have as many different revenue classes as we'd like. I'll put this under food. Next, we choose the item group. The item groups break all of our menu items down more specifically for reporting purposes as well as placing discounts on groups of items. I'll put this one under entree. Next, we choose a screen category. This is where our servers will actually find it out on that order entry screen. I'll put this under entree as well, but I can put any item under multiple categories if I'd like. Choose OK. And next, we choose a choice set. This is going to be any modification that you can make on this menu item. I'll go ahead and put a side, an add, and a no. Next, we choose the printer that this item will print out on. I'll choose kitchen for this item, but I can choose multiple printers. I can also have as many different printers as I'd like, so if we have multiple printers in the kitchen, we can name those here. The last thing I have to do is give this item a price. So we'll say the dinerware special is $15. Now we're done creating our menu item. It takes less than 60 seconds. Down here, we do have the option of putting our rough cost in, so when we run our reports, we can actually see the profit on this item. I'll go ahead and say this costs us $5 to make. I'll hit OK, and then when I go back out into my order entry screen, under entrees, you can see here is my dinerware special at $15. Any change that we make in the system populates in real time. There's no need to reboot the system, and you can make this change from any terminal in your restaurant, and it will update on all of your workstations automatically. I'll go ahead and pay this out, and then we'll be able to see this in our reports. So now that we've covered the menu, let's go over the discount section. Here's where we can create a new discount, a coupon, a daily special, or an employee discount. We can have as many different discounts as we'd like. We can also very quickly activate or deactivate the discounts whenever we would like. To create a new discount, we'll tap the new button down at the bottom of the screen. You can see how this is very similar to creating a new menu item. The software is very repetitive in that way, which is one of the reasons it is so user friendly. So let's go ahead and create a dinerware happy hour. Next, we need to choose if we're going to apply this discount to an entire ticket or just specific items. Then, we have a couple different ways that we can discount. First, we can force a price. This might be in the case where I make all of my draft beers $5. Next, we can take an amount off, maybe $2 off all of my appetizers, or I can take a percentage off. This might be in the case of an employee discount. 
let's take an amount off, $2 off, and next we choose the items that we want to place this discount on. We can choose groups of items, for example, all of my appetizers, or we can choose specific items. I'll go ahead and choose my dinerware special. Here's where we choose if we want to apply this discount automatically or manually. We'll apply this discount automatically since it is a happy hour and down at the bottom is where we can restrict the days and times that this happy hour will be applied. So maybe this happy hour is only available Monday through Friday, not Saturday and Sunday, between the hours of 6 a.m. and 2 p.m. We can also set a date range down here, so if we have a special running for only a month, we can set that month down at the bottom, and then when that month is over, the discount will simply fall off and we won't have to worry about it anymore. I'll go ahead and hit OK. And you can see, now when I choose my dinerware special, that dinerware happy hour has been automatically accounted for. I'll go ahead and pay this out as well, so we can see this discount in our reports. Now let's take a look at our reports. Within the software, we do have over 85 reports. These are broken down into different categories, such as sales, product mix, labor, and more. First, let's take a look at our payroll report. Any of our reports can be pulled up from any time period that we would like. So I can look at the last five hours, even the last five minutes if I'd like. The system never dumps any information, so I can pull any report since the moment the software was installed. So here's our payroll report. You can see I have all of my employees here with all of the jobs that they've performed. I have all of the hours that they've worked, their rate of pay. This also records all of their tips, credit card as well as cash. And then I have my totals here. I can save this report in any of the below formats and either email this right from the terminal to a payroll report company or anybody that needs to see it or download it right onto a thumb drive from the terminal. Next, let's take a look at our product mix report. This report is going to show us every single item that we've sold within that time period. First, breaking it down by revenue class and then by item group. Then it has every single item that I've sold within that time period in descending order. It'll have my gross sales on that item and if I put in my cost when I'm creating the menu, I'll also be able to see my profit on that item. And again, for every single item that we've sold and at the bottom here we have our grand totals. Next, let's take a look at our restaurant financial overview. You can see here in the top corner, I have all of my gross sales broken down by revenue class. This also records all of my transactions by tender type. All of our discounts are right here. You can see that diner or happy hour that we just recorded. Here is all my tax information. We also have net sales by day part here. We can see all of our voids here. Here's all of our tip information recorded. And down at the bottom here, we have some handy statistics. For example, head count, net per head. We even have a labor percentage down here. And again, I can save this in any of the below formats and send it off to anybody who needs to see it. Maybe an accountant, for example. So that's the reporting section. Now let's take a look at our daily report tab. This is where we see all of our sales for the day. It's very similar to a Z report on the cash register. And this can be printed out right on the receipt printer and placed into our deposit. This report, just like any of our reports, can be pulled up from any time period we'd like. This is also where we change our message of the day. So any message you'd like to communicate with your staff, you'll enter here and they will see that on the front page of the software when they clock in and log into the system. The next section I would like to highlight for you is the Fresh Sheet. The Fresh Sheet was designed for daily specials. 
However, it can be used to track any sort of easily portionable or countable item on your menu. We simply select the item that we would like to keep track of. For example, how about our wings? And we'll go ahead and edit this item. We can put the quantity that we know we have into the fresh sheet and we can see this quantity always or maybe we only want to see it when it's less than 10 so we know that we're getting low. We'll go ahead and see this always. I'll hit OK and then when I go back out to my very front screen it'll take a moment to populate but we can see here's my fresh sheet with my wings at quantity 50 and when I enter back into the system we can see here are my wings at 50 as well and if I order a few of these you can see the system will count that down. If we want to 86 an item, we can enter that into the fresh sheet as well. For example, my Budweiser, we'll simply enter zero into the fresh sheet, and that way our servers will be able to see that we have 86 the Budweiser bottle. And if I try and order that, you can see the system won't even allow me to because we've ordered too many. Well, that's everything that we will cover in the demo today. Please see our list of videos for demos on quick service, bar and nightlife, as well as more specific demos on the loyalty program, splitting a check, using the coursing feature, and more. If you'd like to schedule a personalized demo, please visit dinerware.com and request a demo. Thanks again for joining me today, and good luck with your business.